we go. What's going on, Sumalings? How are you guys doing on this Friday afternoon? Thank you guys for, for joining us today. I am in a rainy Austin, Texas, and we have Angel, the CEO of Freed Camp on here, joining us from Santa Barbara, which is awesome. We got some of his folks on here as well to help out in the comments. What's going on, everybody? Ben, Carlos, Dora, how is everyone doing today? Before we get started, let us know in the comments, are you guys already using Freed Camp? Are you looking forward to using it? Are you on the webinar to figure out, you know, best practices? Or are you trying to be, be convinced that this is the right tool for you? Let us know. A um, couple of pieces of housekeeping before we go in. So Freed Camp, if you don't know, is a project management tool that helps teams collaborate effectively and complete projects in a fraction of the time. And we're going to turn over for this walkthrough. Two pieces is um, if you got questions about Freed Camp, click that Q&A button below the video and we will... Uh, we will circle back to those towards the end. We will also be sending out a replay um, afterwards once the recording finishes processing. So if you've got any questions or you want to rewatch any of that, we'll get that out to you. Um, but that's all I got for now. So Angel, thank you for, for hopping on this afternoon. Yeah, absolutely. Super excited uh, to show all the AppSumo guys how to use the system. Um, I've kind of created a special presentation that's going to focus on those things that are going to get you productive. Uh, I want to make sure that when everyone leaves this presentation, they feel like they really have the hold on free camp and how to get everything done. So yeah, I have a good stuff prepared and then we're going to have some Q and A to get you guys um, asking the questions that you are interested in. And I may have missed because there's a lot to awesome. talk about. Sounds great. Well, I'm going to turn off my camera for now. I'll come back on the end for the Q and A. Let me know if you have any questions, but the, yep, the slide deck is coming through clearly on my end. So okay, uh, you if you want to jump into it, Perfect. Yep, you are looking right. good. Let's get it played. So little presentation, especially made for AppSumo. And um, if you guys can just kind of enter into the chat, the different industries you might be from, it always helps me to cater uh, the different features that I end up showcasing. If it's marketing, if it's uh, you know, real estate, it really helps to find what features you might get more use of. As this brief camp has such a wide variety of features, um, it's impossible for us to fit it all into an hour. Sometimes even three hours might not be enough. So to get it all focused, see a lot of marketing, a lot of web development that goes along with our actual uh, research of our existing users. So that's definitely the area of expertise I can uh, focus on. So let's get started. The topics for today, how to structure your projects. Uh, we have a very advanced system with permissions and groups and projects and administrators. So I want to make sure that you get that fully um, understood and then you can really set things up correctly from the get-go. From the get We're going to find some really good tips for increasing productivity, stuff that you now might find easily without clicking around the system. Uh, you're going to become a notifications guru because FreeCamp has one of the most innovative notification systems that saves you a lot of time uh, kind of getting updated on your projects. Then we're gonna do a quick overview of the applications that we offer, and then a deep dive into maybe one or two of them, uh, depending on how much time we have and what you guys are interested in hearing about. And lastly, we have some really exciting things coming in 2020, so I wanna go over a few of those without sharing too many details. All right, so let's dive into structuring projects. The way FreeCamp organizes projects is in these logical chunks called groups. Um, and a group can be anything, you know, your team needs to be. In many situations, a group would be your client. So if you're in publishing, web design, and you have different clients, so those clients might have a WordPress website, they might have uh, social media things they need you to design. So one of our clients here in the example is McDonald's. And McDonald's has a marketing project, a brand new redesign. And that way you're logically chunking the, the type of work you're doing and most of the time, the type of billing that is being done for that client. So it separates things nicely. And our second uh, example here was Subway, uh, who are leading a marketing effort and a redesign effort as well. The second type of organization and way to use groups to organize projects will be like if you have different departments in the company. So in our company, we have a mobile team, we have a support team, uh, design team, et cetera. So each of these teams gets to have their own project, you know, their own kind of little space to work in, live in, uh, and then we get to see their progress from the different reporting tools that FreeCamp offers. 
So in this example, the engineering team is responsible for an iOS application and the React website. And then you have a finance team who does uh, tax refunds and expense reports. Pretty much my favorite <laughs> part of the work. So let's dive in with groups. Groups have two important uh, differences than most other systems online. Groups offer something called an administrator. Think of a group administrator almost like somebody you're giving full reins to run a specific group. So in my team, I have a person that is responsible for the support staff. So they're gonna be the group administrator for all the different projects that the support staff does. Um, they can create projects, install applications, do pretty much anything except charge your credit card for some additional features unless you agree to it. And then we have group applications which we'll see in a little bit in the demo, which you can also restrict to specific users. So if you wanna have your password application limited to just you and your CFO, uh, you can restrict that, or within the actual password application, we can limit which users see which password. Then we dive into projects. Projects have a lot more fine-tuned uh, customization of the permissions and the different uh, structures. It starts off on the top, with a project team. So you can have a design team, you can have an administrator team, depends on how you wanna use them and you can make as many teams as you'd like. Um, one issue with teams that are local to a specific project is that if you create a new project, you have no way of accessing the same people that are uh, in the first project you created. So we created something called global teams, which I'll show you, and they are amazing for that specific purpose of saving you a lot of time, especially if you have you know, a lot of hiring or firing and you wanna get somebody out of a number of projects instantly, global teams are the best way to go. And then we have customization as to which of these teams can access which application. So let's look at it in the actual management system. So here's FreeCamp homepage and I click on manage system. Here's a set of uh, projects I've created over the years. And I'm gonna start absolutely fresh and create a new project in a new group. So my new group is called Engineering and the project is called Design New Freecam Website. Great. Notice on the bottom left, I have the option to invite global teams right away. And since I'm not ready to do that, I'm gonna save. And now we're into the management of a specific project. Here are all the different applications that we offer for this project, which are easily toggled on and off. Each of these applications has the different teams that have access. And we can add people by saying quickly add a user, that's just one off, invite multiple users, etc. Up here on the top right, we can invite now a global team. So I've created an example demo team called design. I select it, save. And now I have my design team as part of the team player group, uh, team player team. And they can access any of the applications here that they are permitted to. So if we remove everybody from milestones, and now I just want my team players from the design team to see it. I select them and no other team will see this application. This is very useful for invoicing, passwords, the, the types of applications that have sensitive information. And then if your design team changes, we manage it all in one place up here where it says global teams. So the user you remove from the design team will instantly stop having access to every place that he's been added. And as I said, every time you create a new project, you have the very easy way of adding that same team over and over. How do we add group administrators? So if we go up to the right tab users, we'll see that I am the group owner. You can only have one owner, that's the guy that pays. And then we can add group administrators. So here's the list of a few users. Let's add somebody as a group administrator that I, I don't know who it is, but I'm glad that I'm giving it some access. Now they can come in and create projects. That means that you don't have to micromanage, you don't have to get an email every time they do a new project. 
they can come in, create projects, archive projects, install applications, etc. You give them the full control. Um, down here, we have the rest of the users for this um, group. And it allows you to instantly add somebody to all the projects in that group as a group user. So there are a lot of little features you're gonna find as you use the system. I highly suggest looking at all the little three dots for, for additional um, options because you'll find stuff like remove the team from like every project and um, yeah, a lot of features are hidden behind the little three dots. So here are the group applications that I was talking about. The passwords, CRM, and invoices are all group applications, which it makes life really easy if you have, let's say, a client called um, Coca-Cola, and you want to store all the different people you're interacting with within that company, you can create the CRM application inside of that group. And that way, all the projects that are inside of the Coca-Cola group will use the same CRM application. So it's much more global, much easier to manage multiple projects within one uh, group. You can install it and then choose which users we'd like to have access to that application. All right, here are the global teams. Quickly add people, see which um, projects these teams have been added to. And then the final level here is, um, you know, one of our big goals since the beginning of FreeCamp was we didn't want to overwhelm people with features like every other system. Even if we have the features, it doesn't mean you have to actually see them all, all the time, cluttering the interface and complicating it. So you really have the option to fine tune almost every aspect of what you see and what you don't see within the application. So if you don't use features, you can quickly disable them and it becomes a lot easier and um, simpler interface. So that's our groups, permissions, projects. And here's a quick rundown of the different types of teams you can have. Your team player is your regular employee. He can pretty much add stuff, edit, delete stuff. And um, he's just not an administrator. He can't install applications and he can't invite people. The contributor is that safety net role where they can edit and delete their own items, um, but they can't touch other people's things. So they can't delete every single task in your system overnight. It's kind of a safety thing, especially if you have a client that you're a little worried about their tech savvy levels, uh, that's a good one. And then we get into the observer and guest roles, which are both non-paid. So you can add as many of those guys as you want. Um, and they can view tasks, add comments, and uh, see all the other items created by the users and download files, which for a lot of clients, being able to download the files that you know, they need to preview and leave comments with feedback is really what uh, matters there. And, okay, now we start getting to the productivity aspect of FreeCamp. Uh, there's a few dashboards that really save a lot of time. And so we're gonna start off with our homepage. The homepage has three panels on top and one big one on the bottom. The top left panel is going to give you all the types of work that you are currently working on. So tasks assigned to you, uh, all sorted by the priority they came in with. Uh, you have your issues, CRM tasks, basically every application that requires you to do something is going to be here in one place. You don't have to go searching out throughout the whole system. It really helps clients and employees when you onboard them so that as soon as they log into FreeCamp, they have an idea of what they need to get started with. Then the middle, we have my favorite panel, which is the notifications panel. This panel tries to take sometimes hundreds of notifications and it summarizes it down to about six, seven, eight, maybe 10 important ones that really require your attention. So it's gonna save you a lot of time from browsing around and looking for uh, the right notification to read and respond to. So here we have items that are assigned to me, they got an update, if somebody mentioned me or items that I created. So I wanna make sure that my employees are getting their tasks done on time. I'll get all the notifications about what's happening with those. Here we have the project list, which can be sorted by a number of variations from favorites to recent, or you can just customize the order. 
And on the bottom, we have our agenda view. So this really lets you know what's happening this week. Are there any meetings that I need to attend? Is there any tasks that are upcoming for maybe a friend or for myself? Um, or you can just filter it to the items that are assigned to just yourself. So this agenda view is a great way to know what's coming up on your plan. The next board we're gonna show is the task board. So the task board saves time because it takes every task application and every project, especially if you have hundreds sometimes, and it combines it in one place. It has a plethora of filters you can apply, as you see here, to really tune it down to a manageable list of items. And then of course, you can save those filters for later so you can quickly toggle between the different um, filtering options. So here we see the project name, um, the task list name, and then the tasks inside it. So this is a great way not to have to go back and forth between a bunch of projects to find the type of tasks you're looking for. The calendar board is similar in that it combines a lot of applications, um, but what it's different about it is that it takes any application that has a due date, so it could be milestones, issues, tasks, whatever it is, or calendar events, and it puts them all in one place. Again, huge list of filters, so you can choose exactly which project, which applications, and then narrow this down to the stuff that's uh, really useful for, for you. I found that a lot of people like to visualize their month, their week this way. Uh, so yeah, we've added a lot of features with Google integrations, with um, exporting, importing, and even being able to invite people into calendar events that are not a part of your free camp system at all. So they can be, you know, anybody, your mom, whoever you want to send an invitation, they can get it and they can accept it and then attend the meeting. So it's, it's really good. And as you see here, uh, where's my calendar event? Here is a task and Here's a meeting. So in the meeting, you can add a description, you can add comments, files. It's really, really advanced. And when you add some other things like tags, they become actually one of the best calendar apps that I've personally used. Uh, so we really love using the calendar application, it saves a lot of time. Last on our list is the widgets application. This is your sandbox. Here you can choose and create like one of many different types of widgets. Uh, here's the list. And then if you choose tasks, you can then choose which projects you wanna see, which uh, progress, how many, et cetera. So you can really customize this to the type of information you wanna be seeing. And I'm really hoping we can add some of these uh, widgets to the homepage as well for people to really get crazy with customizing uh, the type of information they like to see. Okay, these are our boards. So we got the task board, which does support, by the way, Kanban and Gantt. We have our calendar board. Here's the nice agenda view. And the widgets board. Now, there's four features that are so, so good and, and they help you so much, but many users end up just not seeing them and missing out on all the great functionality. So we're gonna dive in with tags which are a great way to link things across many projects, uh, many different applications. And we're gonna go into one of our projects here. And let's look at a task. Okay, so this task has a little edit button and currently there are no tags. So I'm gonna add a tag called app Sumo, save. Now I'm gonna to go to an entirely different project, a random one in the list. And we're gonna do the exact same thing. Um, app Sumo. Okay, so let's do this task in full screen. Here we have the description. Here we have who's actually subscribed to this and gets notifications. And now here we have the tags associated with it. So if I control click or command click, if you're on Apple, it's gonna open up a new page where I can search every type of tag that's been added to the system. So this is gonna go through every type of item that's been tagged and you can see it all in one place. I can choose multiple tags. 
and voila. So this has been one of those really, really important changes in FreeCamp to allow organization and quickly finding items that are you know, scattered across many projects all in one place. Very, very useful. Tags are fantastic. Next, we have the Quick App feature. In the next version, some amazing updates to that one as well. But for now, anywhere in the system, clicking this little plus icon lets you choose a project, choose an application, and quickly jot down the idea that you had so you don't forget it. After Quick Add, we have templates. Uh, and I am pretty confident that our templates are some of the most advanced in the industry. So let's look at an example of what a template looks like. Go to, ah. So you actually have to select not from scratch, but in template. So the second choice is the one that lets us go to the template mode. I can choose any existing project, including archived ones. So as you see here, I created a project called template survey. That way everyone knows don't touch this project and if it's archived, they wouldn't even see it. And I use it as my template every time I'm creating a survey project. So we can type in a new name here, choose which applications to import, choose if we wanna set the due dates to uh, get cleared or just get started from a new starting date. And you can even reverse it so that it starts from a end date. So if your project is based on some deadline that you have to deliver, you can schedule everything back from that due date. Or if your project has to start on a specific date and then two week chunks for every sprint, you can go from the starting uh, point. So let's choose a date. And we can choose to keep people subscribed and assigned to notifications, remove people, yada, yada, yada. Pretty much everything's covered here. And as soon as I click create, takes a few minutes at most, depending on how large the project is, you get a brand new um, project in your mailbox. And you have the choice to actually keep it archived until you're ready to enable it. So these templates, very, very quick way to start a new projects, especially if you have projects that constantly uh, repeat the types of tasks and types of deadlines you have to meet. Uh, now we're gonna look at bookmarks, which is a quick way to save specific pages. Let's say that uh, me and my teammates have been talking about this management task all the time, and I really want to keep it close to my heart. So I'm going to add a little shortcut, choose a name, and now I can always access from my little bookmark screen. And the reason I personally love this is because, look, I have like um, so many bookmarks. This is actually my demo Chrome account, but in my normal Chrome account, I have too many bookmarks. So I love being able to use this feature as my secondary way to keep things on my radar. And last but not least is our brand new advanced search option. The search option is on the top left and you can choose to search by text. You can select different groups, multiple project groups, multiple projects, applications, etc., and even tags. So you can keep narrowing down that search result to really quickly find uh, whatever item you're looking for. And having used FreeCamp for 10 years now, I gotta tell you, until this feature, it used to have times where I like pull my hair looking for the project that contained a task with something important. Now, it pretty much never takes more than a couple of minutes to find even all the oldest items in our back backlog. So highly suggest playing with this feature. It will save you a lot of time finding the right item quickly. And now we get into some of the notification stuff. Truly one of my personal favorite features because it's been saving me countless hours every single day. Um, let's start off with the homepage panel and then go into the actual notifications page. So as we saw initially, you have this very summarized list here in the middle that quickly gets you the important things. Uh, and if you go up here to the little red notification list, you get to see all the different notifications you have. If we go into a more uh, populated account, I'll actually pull my live account for you guys because it's really fun to see. Sec. 
that is. So this is my live account. Don't look. But here's the items that are assigned to me. So obviously, I want to hear about these items right away. Here are the items that I'm mentioned in. So somebody's requiring my attention. Again, really important stuff. Here are items that I received a response, which means I asked somebody a question and they responded so I can actually go and quickly respond to them back. So instead of taking weeks or days until I see their response right here in one place. And then I see the, re the remaining list of items that are involved with, um, which could be pretty, pretty good. Uh, and I call this the dark uh, part of my notification part, uh, screen, which is the other item notifications. You can pretty much ignore those. <laughs> for the most part. Cool. So notifications here, you have the very cool little quick summary. Even if uh, 15 people change the due dates and the progress, whatever it is, it's gonna combine it into the one thing that it started with last time you saw it, and then show you the, the last update that was made to it. So due date was removed, start date was added, and progress was completed. Very, very um, time-saving feature, because if you look at pretty much any other system, you have these long lists of every little thing that happened. And so your brain is having to be like a computer trying to track every single thing until it figures out, oh my God, somebody just completed the task and I have to read about it in 20 items. So very nice little summarized view. And then you can click expand. You can mark it red from right here, even add a comment. Very, very, very easy and fast way to manage your um, notifications. And the last item on the notification list is the recap page. This is another lifesaver. If you're always worried about the tasks that uh, you might be late on or what's coming up in your agenda, here's your, specific, like, your unique list of tasks that have to be completed. This one's only 500 days overdue apparently. So I'm doing right on time. We have our milestones and then specific things that happen today. So important meeting and management tasks. This is your nice little overview and you get that email to yourself as well. Um, so you can choose your settings from the settings page, how much you wanna receive and how much you wanna know about it. Okay, now you're a notifications guru thanks to all the little improvements we've made over the years. Um, now let's summarize the different applications we have and we are gonna dive into tasks real quick uh, but the rest of the applications, I'd really like to hear which ones you're more interested in hearing about um, because they're also packed with features that it would take too long to cover them all. So I'm going to quickly explain each one, then explain the task application more in detail, and then we're going to see what the audience thinks we should cover more in depth. So task application, I'm going to go in depth on so we can skip this one for now. Discussions. I find it to be a great way to have conversations about a task that will potentially come into your pipeline so that you don't create the task and then create this crazy amount of comments that floods it with information that when the developer that needs to actually build it gets overwhelmed trying to figure out what actually has to get done. Um, discussions also have a feature where you can make it a private discussion. So if you want to just talk about something with the client, you can make that private and just go between the two of you. Um, you know, everyone finds their own use case for discussions, but for us, being able to discuss ideas is like, you know, in the very, very concept stage of ideas, it's fantastic. Then we have our calendar, which as I said, is a fantastic tool that shows you all the different items with due and start dates in one place, integrates with Google Sync, et cetera. Uh, we have milestones, which we just upgraded to be very, very useful. And um, we're, yeah, we're loving using those guys. You can um, associate tasks from any task list into a milestone. It will show you progress. Uh, it, lets you, it lets you do basically creating tasks within the milestones application. Very, very flexible, and it's a great way to manage sprints. So if you do what we do, which is have a task list for each type of um, team, design, engineering, et cetera, when we create a sprint, that way we can have it all in one place and have progress report on how much percent has been completed. So definitely an interesting feature to check out. Uh, the wikis are a great way to add company documentation, to um, share different guides, uh, all our software guides internally, how to use uh, PHP Storm, how to write JavaScript functions, et cetera. We all keep it in the wiki. But even cooler is that our entire support, you know, tutorial system that you see when you go to the help page is all hosted in our own wiki by making a wiki item public. 
So you can make it public, it gives you a link, and then any user has access to that uh, wiki. Wikis also have multiple versions where you can select to, compare them, revert versions. Basically, if somebody keeps adding new content, you don't lose your old content. So it's, it's very, very nice for that as well. Um, highly suggest checking that application out as well. Then we have the issue tracker. Uh, it has a few specific features that make it unique from tasks or milestones or anything like that. You have a special option to select a closer for a task. So if you have one engineer performing the issue and then a manager or a testing guy who needs to actually verify it before it gets completed, you can set somebody to actually be able to close it and not be the person that is working on the task. Uh, the issues also allow you to embed a little widget in your website that anyone from anywhere can open up. It opens in your website. They can report any kind of issue that they're having with your page. Or one of my favorite examples was a gardener who used to have clients basically use that widget on his website to request certain things from him. Uh, very flexible, very fun, and he can respond to their um, submissions by email or via the, the application. So it's very, very useful, great way to get in feedback or issues. FreeCamp also utilizes it for all the reports that our users make. Uh, then we move into time tracking. Time tracking is fantastic. You can either just add time entries. You can have a little timer that you start and stop to really know how long you've worked on different things. Uh, you can build your clients with it in the invoice app and a lot of other cool features that uh, I think you would enjoy. The files application is pretty advanced. It has folders, it has versions, it has comments and feedback, uh, a lot of cool functionalities, and it integrates with all the you know, main drive providers, got Google Drive, uh, One, SkyDrive, or whatever Microsoft came out with, uh, and all the other ones. So you don't have to keep the files in FreeCamp. You can link them to any one of your existing systems. The passwords application is fantastic. Uh, it's very, very secure and allows you to share things like a, a Twitter login and password. So if you have a marketing team, they can all have access to the password for that specific application. Our invoicing is great for freelancers. They build their clients, they track their payments, they can even build them with PayPal. So very, very cool. Integrates with CRM and time tracking. So you can quickly import the client and the time you build them. And then we have our CRM application which could be used for managing your contacts or actually having a uh, lead generation pipeline. So all these are great applications. Sadly, we can't cover them all. I'm gonna start with the task application and while I'm presenting it, please feel free to add it in the comments uh, which application you're most interested in hearing about. So let's dive into tasks. Okay. So the first thing about tasks, let's find a bigger project here. The first thing about tasks is there are three different views which all have their own unique benefits and characteristics. The list view, of course, one of the oldest types of task views. Uh, you have your task list here. You can quickly add items. What makes the FreeCamp task list very unique is the ability to quickly drag people's names afterwards and assign things to them and change priority. So when you're in a meeting and you're trying to quickly jot down the tasks that you're discussing, you do that here. And after the meeting, when you're deciding, okay, who wants to take over this or who wants to, uh, or, who, or how important is this item? Very easy, quick drag and drop. Only system that does that. And it's a pretty fun little feature, which leads us into the Kanban mode. So if you're liking, this view, which my girlfriend personally loves, this is all she uses. It's a great way to see, okay, what's being worked on, what's should be worked on, and what's been completed. So I'm sure you guys are familiar with Kanban and um, pretty easy to make things into subtasks and et cetera. Or collapse the completed column because who cares what was done? And now we're gonna go into Gantt charts, which have been getting a lot of love lately. So here's all the different tasks with the little picture of who it's assigned to. And if you're familiar with Gantz, I think you'd be pretty familiar with how the whole dependency thing works. We can drag and say, uh, so you're depend on you. Hold on. You are dependent on you. Nope. Oh. 
This guy is telling this guy. Come on. There we go. So now this is obviously a very clear illustration of what depends on what. Um, but you will get little warnings like, hey, this is not done and this needs to be done first. Uh, you also have the ability here to really say exactly how much progress has been done on a specific task as you get close to the date. So very cool features here. The newest feature we added is the resource view. So we can check here, what are all the employees busy with? Um, Angel has a bunch of things here assigned to him. And this is telling you the little green number, how many tasks assigned to him at this period. We can switch it off to the hours. And uh, I must have left one of these timers on since the demo I did five years ago. So I have 73, 7,300 hours worked. <laughs> True story. Um, but it's a great way to know who's working on what and who's busy. Um, we're planning on expanding this with you know actual time estimations and time tracking. But yeah, this is fantastic feature. If you like Gantt charts, that's, this is a great way to go. Now, the rest of the features here uh, that are useful, I think that you'd find very useful. Uh, emailing in is absolutely fantastic if you do a lot of work with email where clients are sending you emails and then you actually need to turn those emails that you got from the client into a task. Well, it's an instant forward to the email in link that you get generated and it creates it, it adds attachments. It's a it's really easy way to kind of get away from using email and get everything tracked in your actual project management system. Um, we have here the exporting into a spreadsheet. You can then import from a spreadsheet. Very, very useful um, features. And if we go back to the list view, I do want to point out a couple more features here. Next to each list, uh, you find a large set of features. The more important ones I want to point out are you can archive a list, then you can open up the archive list of lists. You can reorder the list pretty easily. And one of our favorite features is being able to actually copy or move lists. So if you have a list that you realize actually the exact same work is going to, need to be done on another client's uh, project, you can just copy the list over. Uh, or if the design team no longer wants to work on something, you can move it over to the engineering team and et cetera. You can automatically shift all the due dates. So it saves you time if the team's all late. Uh, and you can instantly delete all your completed tasks. I don't suggest doing that. Typically archiving is a very sufficient way to keep your tasks uh, clean from, from the list. So let's look at the chat here. Any questions on the task application before I move on? CRM, get charts. Okay, um, seems like a lot of people are asking about the CRM application, so we're probably gonna cover that. You can, you can definitely export the time track. It's extremely advanced. You can filter it and then export it. Uh, I'll show you an example with the task application because it works the same exact way. I can say, okay, show me only things completed in the last week. It's probably that filter, yeah. Uh, things created this week. Voila. So once you apply the filter, you can choose to export the tasks that have been filtered. So instead of every single task in the project, just the ones that have been filtered, same exact thing with the time tracking. You want to choose a specific employee. You want to choose their hours that they tracked just for the past week. Very, very customizable. And um, if we don't have any other task questions, How does FreeCam compare it to ClickUp? Uh, ClickUp's gotten very complicated because they keep adding a bunch of features. They, they, didn't, they don't do the, the thing that we're doing and a lot of companies should do, which is instead of keep adding new features, actually try to figure out how to make the existing features way, way simpler. Um, and the stuff that we're gonna be working on and releasing towards next, next year is gonna just change the way that we really collaborate online. And that's the type of stuff that ClickUp sadly is not going to be releasing anytime soon because they're too busy adding every imaginable feature, even if it's not perfect. So a lot of features, a lot of complications there. Um, let's go to the CRM application. 
So here we have a number of tabs. And the first tab that we have open here is the dashboard. Here you see the latest activity. So new lead, added it, deleted, edited it. It's a great way to, uh, you know, if somebody calls you up and you know that you recently interacted with them, you would see it on this list. Or you can just search for them and uh, find the person that you need to talk to. So here's that op one guy. Very, very easy. And it's, um, you know, I've worked in actual, I built a very advanced CRM system for another company. And one of the features that all the employees were really needing is the ability to pick up the phone, hear the name of the person and quickly find them so they can see their notes and, and what they need to talk about. So that's the dashboard. Uh, you see your little upcoming tasks here as well. So you know what's coming up. And then we go into contacts. So this is obviously going to be your list of people you've interacted with. Um, the different companies. So if we click to create a brand new contact, you can put in as much information as you'd like, multiple addresses, and the company, you can choose one of the existing companies you're working with or create a brand new company. So this is super useful when you're billing clients or when you're searching for clients. Uh, and as a contact, it could be just a contact, like a vendor that you interact with, which, you know, not somebody to be selling anything, but if it's somebody who actually is a lead that you want to put, put through the whole uh, funnel, you can actually make them into a lead. So let's actually play with our new uh, AppSumo lead, who's the CEO of AppSumo. Okay, so I'm going to add my lead here and set a reminder to talk to them next week. And that leads us nicely into our leads tab. So this is what I call my funnel. Um, I just added my new AppSumo lead, who is the CEO of AppSumo. And I'm going to contact them on Monday when I get the reminder. And once I contact them, I can drag him right into my contacted list. Once I contact them and I offer him a demo, move him down to the demo, etc. Until, of course, all of us convert to the converted tab. You sold them, you're good to go. Um, what I found to be really cool is that you don't need to use this. If you just want to use it as a contact management system, it's fantastic. And then if you actually do want to use it as a um, lead generation system, it's also fantastic. You can store every call that you have. You can store different tasks and follow up on people. Uh, and what I like to do is keep all the notes about every conversation I had with them here. So I know as soon as they call me, that's right. We talked about doing a huge discount to AppSumo and give them the best offer we've ever done. So this is a fantastic place to do this and you can download it as a V card and you can actually always export all your contacts and put them into any other CRM if for whatever reason you don't find our features sufficient because there's you know, much more advanced CRM systems that we didn't wanna uh, try to compete on feature wise. You can see all your tasks about all your different contacts in one place here. And you can see the different calls that you've made or scheduled, again, all right here. So when we view the call, I can add some notes inside of this call. I can set a duration, et cetera. Uh, if you are actually tracking the different campaigns you do, so let's create a new little campaign here called AppSumo. Sorry, my keyboard's a bit. Okay, and that started on the 8th and on the 15th. Goal is to get rich. So the earnings, so far we've actually made 1 million, I think. And then I can choose the different leads. So let's see if I can find my sumo lead here. Cool. So as we can see here, I have my total target earnings of 1 million, and then I can start adding uh, results. So last, Yesterday, I think we made 20,000 and um, leads gained 1,000, submit. And there you go. You're tracking the different campaigns and you can see how you're actually progressing. Um, overall, that's the CRM application. Uh, we do have custom fields. So if you want to actually have, oh, somebody actually asked that. Fantastic. Yes, you can actually store any kind of information you want about your contacts. You can add. Uh, for example, if, you, if you're working with vendors and they give you a special coupon to use when you shop at their website, you can have a coupon. Uh, you can get, yeah, all the way through. 
Sadly, this isn't linked to our normal custom fields for the task application, but we are planning to do that integration so you can have more types of fields like a date picker uh, or a color picker. <laughs> so uh, quickly add a new field. And now when I create a new contact, that field is gonna show up right down here. Cool. Um, any other questions about CRM? Or we should move on to one. Uh, actually, how are we doing on time, Chris? Yeah, we're getting a, we got to wrap up by three, okay. but if you have any, anything else you want to go through and then we can go through a couple questions as well. I'd love to actually do some questions right now just to give people enough time uh, to really dig in. So. Okay, great. Um, yeah, let me, let me pull some of those up. Okay. Let's see. Somebody just asked if our CRM contacts are scattered in different project groups. Is there a way to see all contacts somewhere? Yeah. So here's the trick with that one. Um, what you should do is you should actually create a group just for your CRM. So I'd call it the CRM group. And then it only has one application installed. And that way you have, and you can you invite anyone you want into that group just to access a CRM application. And then you have it all in one place. It doesn't have to be spread into different uh, groups. It always depends on the type of um, functionality you need out of the system. I, I had one uh, group called freelance and every freelance project I had, I had inside of it. So that way I can keep my freelance clients in that CRM. Uh, but then my free camp plans in another um, group. So, Awesome. Cool. All right. Chris is asking, what is the storage limits that come with this system? Um, so we have unlimited storage. The only limit is on the file uploads. And Igor is going to remind me what the upstream would deal with. But if, if it's the pricing that we – if the same plan as the business plan, then I think you guys get 100 megabyte limits. Uh, mm -hmm. Huh. So yeah, the business plan, you guys get a hundred megabytes and you can upload as many files as you want. That's the limit per file. Awesome. Cool. Cool. All right. Uh, do you have Zapier integrations? We do have Zapier integrations. Um, there's great documentation on that. If you go to our blog, there's uh, let's see if we can do this. Yeah. So if you search for public API free camp, there's a list of uh, the links that you should go and look into. All the Zapier integrations are listed right here. Um, on the CRM, I'm pretty sure we have a great import. Um, yes, we have import and yeah. Zapier is also on the help page. Ah, the help page has a lot of good information too. But yeah, you can import from all the different formats uh, and export. So you did it. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, Next one, Tara is asking, can you add an image to a contact record? Oh, good question. I, not nice work, Tara. Currently, but um, definitely easy to add. And that's something that I guess I, I never thought of. Um, I, I, <laughs> when, you have, when you have too many contacts, like I wouldn't go and find the picture for every one of my uh, leads mm -hmm. in a free camp. So it depends on the use case. But you know, I get there's many use cases where that might be useful. So uh, definitely. Awesome. Cool. Um, you're getting some, some praise in the comments as well. They thought that was a, a great walkthrough. Marianne is, is stoked about this. Um, all right. Let's see. D is saying any built-in templates for product development or marketing tasks, or do we create our own from scratch and then save them as templates? Yes. So we've been planning to have uh, templates that we release and the, the public can share, but we found that there's so many unique types of projects. It's hard to kind of hit them all. Um, so we suggest actually just when you start using FreeCamp, start your first project and carefully think about the tasks and the due dates you create within it. And then you can convert it into a template project. Um, so it's actually really easy, right? You take an existing project, which might have a lot of data, then you convert it into like use the templating system to create a new project out of it. And in the new project, you delete all the stuff that you don't want. You adjust the due dates and then you create your own template. Uh, but we are considering adding some templates, at least in the beginning. Uh, currently, it's just your own projects that you can create and archive. Cool. All right. Paul is asking, can we see an example of the invoice that's sent to a client? Absolutely. Um, I might even switch to my leg system. I have, pretty, <laughs> I have prettier ones there. Uh, let's see what this one has. Ah, 
freelance. Okay. Let's see if I have any pretty invoices here. Okay. Here's an example of an invoice that we did for an onboarding. Um, they get the link to this page. Um, they get a PDF copy as well. Um, they will actually see a more limited version of this. So let's see if I can send myself a limited version. And we can actually see exactly what the email looks like so that um, I should come in any second now. Um, let's look at the PDF version here. We can download it. So they get this attached to their uh, email. So this would be the, the logo. I, this is very old, so the logo has been died since, but um, you can put a logo there. You see all the information of the company, the information of yourself, and um, all the hours you've built them for. So these hours, can, as I said, can come from your time tracking application. You can remind the client if they are, haven't paid yet. And if you don't want to use PayPal to charge them, you can add a payment here by yourself. So you can say, um, yes, they paid $200. So by marking it paid, my outstanding balance here is gonna actually go down thanks to the collecting. Uh, all your paid invoices, once they're fully paid, they go into the paid tab. You can create estimates to let people know how much it's gonna cost beforehand. Then you can convert the estimates into actual um, outstanding um, invoices. Nice. Cool, cool. All right. Um, next one, D is asking, can you import boards from Trello? You can. <laughs> I just did it the other day for fun. But it's uh, not as straightforward as uh, you know I'd like it to be. So the way you do it is there's a Zapier that extracts your Trello boards into a spreadsheet. And then we have the import XLS that would allow you to then import that entire thing into FreeCamp. It's not the most direct way, but it took me about 20 minutes and, and I had all my tasks from Trello into FreeCamp. Okay, nice. All right, um, let's see. And the, asking, way, the Sun import yeah, was ahead. 10 times easier. I did it in like three <laughs> minutes because they have an XLS export. And then all you have to do, the trick that I found that helped me a lot was um, if you go to tasks, just export any amount of tasks from your actual project that you want to import into. And once you export, keep that format and then copy and paste just the, the cells that you want to change, like the title, the description, the, the assignment and due date. But this was the fastest way I found to, to get Asana imported very easily. Great. All right. Um, Tim is asking, which plan is the AppSumo deal? Is it the business enterprise or something unique? I believe you said it's the business it's, one. It's the business plus a few additional features. I think it was based on uh, eager, based on the coupons, you get more of the enterprise features. Uh, yeah. Yes. With three or more coupons, you have uh, from enterprise only 2FA, which is two-factor authorization and white label. And uh, people asking what from enterprise plan you're not getting you're not getting all future updates of the enterprise plan obviously because it's not enterprise plan you're not getting enterprise level of support uh, you're not getting project overview application you're not getting daily snapshots of your data available to download uh, single sign-on uh, and that's pretty much it what you're not getting you're getting only two-factor authorization and the branding with white label from enterprise thanks Awesome. And yeah, Angel, if you want to actually navigate over to the AppSumo page, if you could, and yep. we could just kind of look at it right there and, and maybe you could touch on some of those key features just so everyone's clear on, on what's included in each, each level. Yep. So if we scroll down here, we're going to see, um, the first column is pretty much all our business features. As far as I know, there's nothing missed here. It's absolutely all the business features. Then in the second column, you get to have an additional three users. And once you get three, that's where you get the nine users and the white label and two-factor authentication. Awesome. So while I show the Asana export, While I show the Sana export, we can talk about the roadmap real quick. 
Okay. So in January, we're going to release a brand new homepage that's been um, even further intelligized, improved. So it really <laughs> finds the most important stuff from everyone in the system and it ranks them in a way that um, you literally know, like, this is stuff that I have to see if it's there. Uh, and all the unimportant stuff kind of gets slightly hidden away. It's going to be way faster to update your project all from the homepage, really quick, easy interactions, automated, asking you, do you want to just you know, do this right away? And it does it for you and a very way, a very easy way to actually manage your workload by adding new items, in, which gets suggested to you in March. Please don't tell anybody about this. Uh, we are launching a brand new chat system that is going to completely change the way we collaborate. I mean, it's a very different approach on chatting. Uh, nothing like anyone's ever seen before. And uh, we're actually really excited because it hopefully will take email out of the uh, arsenal of tools we have to use <laughs> daily. And we're going to, towards the end of 2020, we've been working on a completely artificially intelligent project manager who's going to constantly be there asking you questions, assisting you, making sure you get your stuff done on time without you having to do any effort except maybe chat with a bot for a couple of sentences. So it's going to be really, really cool. We can't wait to get it released. So uh, a lot of hard work is going into that. Man, that's super exciting. You guys, you guys got some, some big things on the, uh, on the roadmap for 2020. It's exciting awesome. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's a, a great place to, to leave it off on. Um, so yep. Sumo Links, everyone on here, I know we got a bunch of people. Thank you all for, for joining us on this Friday afternoon. I know there's some questions we didn't get to. Uh, Angel, what's the best way for people to get in touch if there's any outstanding questions? Yeah, absolutely. So um, please be free, feel free to email our support. Igor will add some links there. And uh, I will actually make a tutorial how to export from Asana and Trello so you don't have to struggle because it's, it's very straightforward once you know how to do it. And there's no awesome. reason to struggle with another system. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, well, thank you so much for, for taking the time to hop on. All the, all the Sumo links on here. Hope you guys will, will check out Freed Camp. It's available right now on AppSumo starting at 49 for lifetime access. Again, it's appsumo.com slash Freed Camp. Uh, as you saw, it's a super powerful tool. We're really excited that we, we got these guys on here because it's a, a great deal, great tool. Uh, again, it's all backed by the AppSumo 60-day guarantee. So feel free to get it set up, get your projects in there, get your team in there, see how it works for you guys. Let us know how it works. And if you have any questions, again, you can reach out to the FreedCamp team. You can reach out to us as well. Um, but yeah, check it out. Let us know. And Angel, any, any last words before we sign off? Yeah, the last thing is, if you're not sure about getting it, please go and check it out anyways, because it's a completely free system. So you can actually use most of the features for free right away uh, or get the trial just to try out the advanced features, because I'm pretty sure you're going to fall in love with it and then it's easier to buy. So give it a try. And uh, there's a lot of educational material that we've added over the years. So check out our help section, our YouTube, uh, and don't be afraid to ask support. We have a great support staff as well. Yeah, awesome. thank you guys. Angel, thank you so much. Sumo Links, thank you guys. We'll talk to you soon. Have a great weekend. All right, bye-bye, everyone. Bye.